One possible way to understand the behavior of a distributed storage system is to check how does it write data. And in this video, we will check how Ozon writes the data, especially what network calls are required to write the data. As a reminder, these are the core components of the Ozone cluster. We have an Ozone manager, which is the, the key space manager. So if you would like to create key, bucket or volume, this is which can store it or manage it. And there is another one, the storage container manager. And the main responsibility of the storage container manager is to manage the containers, which are huge binary blobs. So I think we need both of them to write data. And we have all of the data nodes who supposed to store the data itself. So in the previous video, we checked how is it possible to start an ozone cluster with Docker Compose. As a reminder, this is the distribution directory. So if you download ozone, you will you will have something very similar what I have in this directory and I just went to the compose ozone and just to be sure that I have no local data I'm just doing it down and now I can start a docker compose cluster and I can also scale to have at least three data nodes because I would like to write to all of them okay I have an ozone cluster so what's next First of all, I need a volume and a bucket, so I should create them. The AWS S3 has only buckets, but in Ozone we have this top level hierarchy for the volumes. So I'm just creating one and now I'm creating the bucket itself. Okay, so I have a place, oh, bucket create, right? So I have a place to put a file. So let's try it out. Put to wall one bucket one slash key one and let's upload the readme. And just to be sure that this is replicated to three, I'm just setting the replication factor to three to make this command execution independent from the default configuration. So let's oh key put. So let's put the key to, oh, my name was bucket, not bucket one. Oh, finally it's uploaded, but we don't know what has been happened. Fortunately, we have this other tool, which we already checked in a previous video, video the Ozone Insight. Ozone Insight is a tool which can just filter out some metrics, logs and configuration. So I'm just checking what can I check. Ozone inside list. So I have some kind of inside points and let's start with the Ozone manager. So just back to here one, this is the supposed order. So the client will connect to the Ozone manager. The low level binary layer is used only by the Ozone manager. So there won't be any network traffic between the client and this low level layer. And at the end, the client will send the data somehow to the data nodes. So let's try to check what's going on on the OM protocol client side. Mm, let's start it and upload one file. Key one, key two. Okay. What do we have here? So here are the requests. I don't know how do you see it. So this is the this is just the log. And this is service list, info volume, info bucket, create key, commit key. So service list is just the discovery. The client tries to get all of the required IP addresses from the Ozone Manager. So it's enough to remember to the Ozone Manager IP address and you will see everything. So, info volume is, yeah, I need information about the volume and the bucket, which are just created. And finally, I can create a key 
and at the end of the upload all of the data, there is some commit process, which means that the key is committed and will be visible for all of the other clients. So let's check in more details these messages. So if I do a verbos mode and I just upload the next key. So here I can see all of the RPC messages, but I'm scrolling up just to start from the beginning. So this is the service list, what we have seen. Okay, and first we have answer with all of the service ports, Ozone Manager, Storage Container Manager, that's fine. I have an info volume request, just to be sure that I have information about the volume and the volume exists. And yeah, these are the volume, okay, I'm the, the owner is the Hadoop user, so it's fine. Here I have an info bucket request. So this is the bucket, because I fixed the name, so bucket name. And this is the answer, so it still works. And finally, we can start to create a key. So I would like to create a key 3 with this data size, and this is the required replication. So I would like to replicate it to 3 instances uh, with the help of Redis, so there could be multiple replication type. But this is the default and echoes okay and the key is created and one interesting part is in the response we have this key location list so i got an information that where can i put the key so i'm here the data and the ozone manager points to the data nodes actually the storage container manager but this information i retrieved the information from the ozone manager and okay Use this block ID. This is the identifier of the block. You can see that with the first ID, this is the container. The container is the replication group. It's a huge block. So inside this block, I can use this local ID. So and together, this is the block ID. And from offset length, okay, I can just write to this this uh, this block. And here is the information. So is this data node one? data node 3 and I think data node 2 should be used for the three applications. This is a Redis group, so I supposed to find the leader and I will use the IP address only of the leader. And this is an open pipeline so I can use. Okay. And at the end I have the commit key and I'm doing the same. So I have, okay, I created the block, I have the block and this is the final length what i used from this block and i uploaded the data to these data nodes and this is what i'm reporting back to the also manager and the also manager will combine the transaction and it will be visible for all of the all of the other clients okay so but how do you know that these these uh, host host names and IP addresses, or actually, this is uh, this is known by the Ozone Manager. So we can just go back to here, and we are interesting about this arrow. So the Ozone Manager requests the Storage Container Manager about this block block. So let's try to understand this one. So again, Ozone inside list. Check what's. Oh, we have some SCM protocols, so let's try this one and check what's going here. So I'm just checking the logs. This is not the verbose version, so key 4. Yes. Here you can see that this is an allocating SCM block. So we are allocating blocks, or actually the Ozone Manager requests an allocated block for the Storage Container Manager, which will be added to the response. We can check the detailed version of this one. Fortunately, it's very simple. Okay, it's almost the same data. So now we we know the the source of this information. This is from the SCM itself, right? The Ozone Manager requests the block allocation. Okay, so we know this part and this part, and the next is just to understand this part. That how can I write? something to the data node and this is slightly more tricky because here in the in the ozone manager and the storage container manager we just uh, instrumented the protocol somewhere here and somewhere here so we had another call from 
here to here and on the server side here we just print it out with this with the help of Odon inside tool the data the problem is that the data node is more tricky actually because we have uh, let's move it to here because we have a Redis server so the Redis is the raft protocol implementation and this is started inside the data node GVM itself so it's something like this and the client connects to this Redis server which is not the it, it's a separated incubator project so it's a different protocol actually this is a gRPC protocol and it will be the Redis we replicate this re request to the other data nodes with the help of raft consensus protocol so under the hood there is no ozone rpc here but this is the oh this is the oh actually i'm we are just connecting to the leader and the redis itself uh replicates it to the followers so it's something like this let's say this is the leader and we have an other heartbeat to here. So the Redis, oh, how can I, something like this. So the Redis itself, the leader, replicates the data to the two followers. And inside the data node, we have something like a dispatcher. And if the data is replicated, it will saved in the, in the disk. So what we can do is we can debug this dispatcher itself not the protocol, the replication, but we can check the dispatcher, which is nothing more, just processing the real request from the client after the replication. So let's go back to here, and we have Ozone inside list, and Ozone inside uh, logs, oh, we have data on dispatcher, splendid. Uh, Ozone inside logs. The problem is that we have a lot of uh, pipeline. Pipeline is a group of data nodes. Let's say a, a group of three data nodes, which can be so one Redis ring actually. So I need to understand or find the pipeline ID. Fortunately, I can list the pipelines. Here you can see multiple pipelines, but the tricky part is that there is this is replication factor one, this is replication factor one, and I need the factor three. So what I'm interested about this pipeline, this is factor three, which means that this is replicated with Redis. So this is the pipeline ID. So I can go back and just filter to this pipeline. Oh, and it's working. So key six. And finally, I can see all of the data. Okay, let's start with the beginning. So what I have it, write chunk. So I have a lot of write chunk data. Actually, here you can see the data itself. So it's uploaded. I have the write chunk, I have the block ID, but this is sent to the data node. So it's processed by this data node. And I have some junk data that inside the block, this chunk contains the offset of the block, so this is a virtual offset inside the block. So the first part of the block is uploaded here, this is the content, and right chunk, right chunk. One other interesting part is the put block. Put block is very similar to the commit key, and this, is, this commits the uploaded chunks. Here I have only one chunks. And when I uploaded it successfully, I can just commit it and say that, okay, the block can be visible for all of the other data node clients. So let's talk about uh, uh, the different sizes of this level. So we have the container, which is managed by the data node, which is 5 gig. We have a block, which is uh, 264 megabytes. We have chunk size, which is 4 megabytes. So this is the chunk, which is the, the unit of the upload. I'm uploading one chunk, right? Wait, upload next, upload next. And this is buffer size is important because after every buffer size is written, so it's four chunks, this boot block, this uh, commit happens. So I have seen just one put block, but if I would like to generate more, more, more put blocks, maybe I need to start something with a bigger 
uh, file because the readme is uh, it's, it's under 4 megabytes. So let's go back to here. Do some zero an empty file. So this is an empty file and let's call it test and let's say it's a 50 megabytes or something which is close to the megabytes. Okay, okay, 51. Awesome. Let's try to upload it. So I'm just removing these variables just to make sure I can see only the messages, uh, the message types and and let's upload it, but not the readme, but the test. Okay, so what do we see here? So actually, this is a lot of different data nodes. You can see the data node 1, data node 2, data node 2, data node 3. So maybe it's easier to do, do the same, but grab to the right, to, to one data node. So, just upload it. Oh, and even for one data node, you can see that right chunk, right chunk, right chunk, put block. Right chunk, right chunk, right chunk, put block. Right chunk, right chunk, put block. And the and, uh, remaining part and end. It's interesting that we have double of the right chunks which is supposed to be there, because we agreed that we need four chunks before the put block. Put block. The reason is that there are two types of right chunks and here we couldn't see the difference with the variables we, we, we can see but uh, the difference is that for the first right chunk the data is written but when there is a consensus that the data is written to the, all, of the, all of the data nodes there is another right chunk which is some kind of commit. For example, in the first right chunk, we can create a temporary file and with the second, second right chunk, it can be moved to the final place. This is not how does it work by default, but this is a possible implementation with this scheme and earlier we used something like this one. So we have right chunk and uh, put block and here we can see what we notice that we have the container which is assigned by the storage container manager and the block is created by the storage container manager and we are just uploading the chunks to the data nodes one by one and we are doing this put block which is a commit and the end we are doing the commit key so this is the final view of the write path the client to the ozone this is the create key this is the allocate scm block call which is not visible for us so it's under the hood between two servers and the client just write a chunk and sometimes it it does a commit and chunk write commit and finally we commit the key which will be visible for everybody so this is the high level view of the of the ozone write path and in the next next video we can we can see more low level details especially about the replications or practice